Hey guys, uh, Connor coming to you from the front of a moving vehicle that I'm not driving because I won't. Anyway, um, David wanted us to start making some videos talking about uh, different things that we do. There's more than one way to, to skin the proverbial cat. Um, not not necessarily teaching videos, just um, sharing thoughts. We can all we can all make. Uh, you know, contributions to this community. So the one thing that I wanted to uh, point out more than anything is we have a lot of posts that are uh, EDC, everyday carry, and people are doing their pocket dumps and there's always, uh, everybody's got their pistol obviously, some spare magazines, some sort of uh, folder knife, um, wallet, phone, you know, you know the kind of stuff. One thing I never see, or almost never see, and this is this is how you can kind of tell the real shooters from and the people that have had lots of training apart, is because they have medical stuff in their everyday carry. So we have all this uh, fighting, you know, get to the fight and win the fight and all this. What about after the fight? What if you get shot during the fight? What if a loved one? Uh, takes a takes a stray round. What if a bystander, somebody you don't know, uh, takes a stray round? Or the uh, you know the one of the best things you can do to stay out of the court system in a situation like this, where you have a defensive gun use, a legitimate one, is work on the person afterwards, the the bad guy that you shot, uh, to save his life. And so the things that uh, that we can carry on us. Uh, you know, without a whole lot of medical training, you're not gonna. There's not a whole lot you're gonna be able to do. But we can, uh, we can stop. Uh, large, you know, large bleeding areas. We can carry tourniquets. We can carry inclusive dressings. We can carry, um, you know, seal locks or, or some other sort of coagulant. And um, these these are things that'll fit in a pocket. If you can carry a spare magazine, you can carry a cap tourniquet or a soft tourniquet. Uh, if we don't want to do that. There are other options like a, a SWAT tourniquet, which is basically a, um, it looks like a bandage. It's uh, made of rubber and you, you wrap it like a, come on, dude, get out of the way. You wrap it like an ACE bandage. You tuck it under itself and it can provide uh, decent pressure as well as it can be a pressure dressing of its own um, if that's what you need. And we can take that and fold it in such a way along with a small, um, small quick clot, you know, um, it doesn't even have to be in a bandage, it can just be uh, the coagulant agent that you pour into a wound, um, along with some sort of, you know, Israeli type bandage uh, that we can use for uh, a, a pressure dressing in addition to the uh, tourniquet. These things will fit in a sandwich bag that you can put in your back pocket opposite your wallet. For the ladies out there, it'll fit in a small purse. And uh, you know, it's just something we, we really need to think about is what we're gonna do after the fight. And um, you know, you yourself might be might be injured and, and it might be critical um, for you to stay alive. So that's one thing. The other thing. We're not in a, uh, a battlefield situation here. We're not shooting to kill any defensive gun use. We're shooting to stop the threat. And it's, you know, same thing as in law enforcement. You shoot until the threat stops. So when we're not intending to kill somebody, we need to have a plan for, okay, we shot until the threat stopped. We removed the threat, uh, whether it's a gun or a knife. Um, we removed the weapon from the person. What do we do then? Okay, the person sitting there, um, you know, theoretically, if, if they're still alive, they're, they're bleeding, um, we're gonna work on them. We're gonna stop, you know, try and stop them from dying. We're gonna provide the best care we can uh, as soon as the threat stops. Um, but what, what do we need to do to make sure, you know, you're not gonna work on somebody while they're trying to fight you. Um, carry some sort of, you know, something you can use to restrain somebody's hands. You know, when we see this in a law enforcement setting, the, uh, the, the the bad guy goes down, we, we move the weapon away from him, and then they're handcuffed, and then we can render aid. Okay, we're you know we're not we're not all law enforcement, but in a situation like this, that is warranted. Okay, so whether it's a set of handcuffs, whether it's uh, zip you know zip tie style restraints, whether it's uh, the 550 cord that you that you tie somebody's wrists up with, 
um, you know, go ahead and make sure you've got something on your person to, to do that. And uh, that, you know, that's something that can come in handy anywhere else. I'm talking about the 550 cord. We, we carry all this stuff. We, we spend all this time training, preparing for defensive gun use. You're way, 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 way more likely to drive up on a wreck than you are ever in your life to have a defensive gun use. So let's carry some medical stuff. Let's carry some some other tools that um, you know have have more purposes than uh, just winning the fight. And that's all I got.